All right, so I wanted to make this video for a long minute, and uh, it is pretty much the basics of spells. This paired with uh, another video that I will be making on uh, the stats of wands and how you can tell if a wand is terrible or if it's good to begin with. So, without further ado, we'll we'll start this off, and we start off with this wand. This is the normal starting wand. It has normally two spark bolts on it. But for now, we're just going to take one off. And uh, this is pretty familiar. It, it does three damage. It just fires a spark bolt. That's pretty much the basics of a projectile. And then there's a projectile with trigger. So what a projectile with trigger will do is it will uh, spawn the next spell in the list. So this is all done on a no shuffle wand keep that in mind if it is a shuffle wand it'll it'll cast whatever it would like to so this is basics for no shuffle wands if it's shuffle then uh, all this can be disregarded so what this will do is it will spawn something when it hits something uh either an enemy or a wall so th this makes a uh, using using certain spells a lot more useful and uh, you can uh, build around that so that's what a trigger will do and then we have ooh, these are out of order that's all right we have a timer so what a timer will do is it, it will fire the exact same spell that uh, it has and then the timer will fire a spell uh, the exact same if it hits an enemy or a wall or if it hits a certain point so you can't see with this one but let's throw a bubble spark on there so it'll it'll fire it at this point when the timer runs out it'll fire this uh, bubble spark so that that's what a timer will do and then we have a double trigger so this is the only spell with a double trigger and what that will do uh, we can do it with both of these exactly the same as a trigger but it'll spawn two instead of just one. So it gets a little hectic. Let me actually swap this out for a lance. There we go. So that's, oh, we're out of mana. So it's not even casting the lance. There we go. So that that's what that one will do. And then we have materials. So materials are neat. They will spawn the material that it says it will spawn this is water so it'll obviously spawn water and uh it has a neat uh like passive with uh most materials where this one it says on it it'll give negative uh cast delay and negative recharge time we won't get into that right now but it is definitely something to keep in mind and then there is static projectiles. So static projectiles fire projectiles, but when it comes out of the wand, it stays right there. So this one is uh, explosion of brimstone. It pretty much explodes right next to you. I'm in a, a dev world, so it's not going to hurt me. But to make it safe, we throw a trigger on there. And there we go. It explodes over there. Or we can do... Oops, sorry. We can do it like this, and then it'll explode when the timer runs out, so it's a little harder to use, but that is definitely a, a better way of uh, making a spell safe. And then we have other spells. So other spells usually have a neat passive or uh, trait that makes them unique. So this one is a chain bolt, and it has a built-in homing effect so it'll home onto the enemy and start attacking them so it's super neat I'm definitely a fan of it and it also can go through walls Ooh, if I'm good eh, eh. you gotta find the sweet spot yeah there we go so that's what chain bolt does super neat definitely a fan and then there is multicast so what multicast does is it pretty much says exactly in the name it will multicast so there is different variants this one is the double triple quad and then you get into all all sorts of other ones so this one reads multicast spark bolt into bubble spark 
So it'll cast both of these at once. So that is what a multicast does. And then you have projectile modifiers. So modifiers are super neat because they will modify any projectile and uh, cause it to act in, in the certain way that it describes. This one is homing, so it'll obviously home towards your enemies. But if it runs out of mana, it'll just fire the spell that costs the least amount of mana that it can fire. So that's what a modifier will do. And then we have uh, all this all this other stuff. So we're going to throw a pretty basic wand together with all this newfound knowledge. Let's get modifiers and multicast into the mix. So we'll throw a double, double cast on this wand. This is a just a test wand. So we'll throw a double cast. We'll throw a lance. And we'll throw a bubble spark and let's throw these two modifiers on there. So, well, normally you would want to, for for ease of reading, you'd throw the modifiers in front of the double cast or multicast, and then you'd have your projectiles. Because right now this reads modifiers modifying the multicast, and the multicast is giving those traits to the spells. So these are going to cast a flaming freeze charge, glowing lance, and bubble spark. So that's what that does, but it doesn't matter where these modifiers are. As long as it's before the last spell, the modifiers do not matter. They will cast the exact same thing regardless of position. The glowing lance already looks like it's frozen, so you can't really tell. But with this, you can definitely tell that the spark bolt has flaming trail even though it's after it. So if we remove this to here, it won't have it. Well, it had it that time because of spell wrap. But we'll, we'll get into spell wrap someday. That, that is a whole different beast. So we have it here. It does the same. We have it here. It does the same. We have it here. It does the same. No matter where... It is, as long as it's before the last spell in a multicast that can, uh, like, cast all the spells, it, it doesn't matter positioning. It's just easier to read it like this, because your brain works, modifiers mod this, this mods these. So, it, it, all, it all depends on preference, but it does not, well, actually, it will matter that way. But it does not matter where the modifiers go. It obviously matters where the spells go because they need to go after the multicast. So that is what that does. I am on fire. Could you don't? Thank you. So now we're going to throw this spark bolt on. So what this will do, and uh, it, it stays the same. Uh, we, we don't need the modifiers to uh, sit anywhere. But if we were to move this modifier in front of the spark bolt, we'll do it with the flame trail. Uh, it'll set the spark bolt on fire, but not these. So, there we go. That's a little bit easier to show. So these are spawning, the uh, spark bolt and the bubble spark are spawning freezing, but not fire, because the fire is affecting this first spell. So, it depends on what you want to modify first. If you want this to do all the damage, and then these just drop off like something uh, something to clear the area, then you can do that. But most of the time with triggers or timers, you want to have a payload. So you want this to be the carrier, and you want it to drop all this on the enemies. You can throw like this, and you can throw... Uh, I think this wand has enough mana for this. So you want it to do something like this. And uh, you, you don't want this anywhere near you, so having it set up like this is best option. So that is pretty pretty much the basics of uh, learning spells and uh, learning how to place them on a wand that is a no shuffle wand. Hopefully you learn something and uh, have fun uh, wand crafting. Bye!